Behold, aesthetically pleasing Europe. It is the year 18, I want to say 83, there you go, and we are in a position where Europe looks quite interesting and where the power blocks for the endgame are now actually forming. The entire time we have of course dealt here as Greece with the Ottoman Empire and with their unfortunate friends France. I hate France. France has roped Russia into several wars and these wars then led to massive rebellions, led to rebellions right here as well and everything sucks. Quite frankly, I even blame them for the fact that I didn't notice that the East again islands uh, don't have a port uh, let's just build that real quick obviously the french did this i would have never overlooked this on my own now in 1883 we need to decide where we stand and what our power position is i asked you should we liberalize should we change things now i want to say that many of you said we should liberalize it is the time now where maybe we should give back rights to the greek population and to that i say this is your very first verbal warning the secret service of greece has found you and has determined that you are indeed a liberal agitator our king otto von wittelsbach as psychologically afflicted as he might be is not to be questioned. I think for the time being we're gonna stick with exactly what we have. Otto von Mittelsbach is 67, I don't think he is too active anymore as an actual ruler. As you can see right here indeed the psychological affliction is impacting him quite heavily and his heir Maximilian von Wittelsbach, a rather hefty fellow, here is a pacifist and that in itself might lead to a significant shift in how we as Greece behave. Because think about it, he, if he had his way, would at the very best get rid of our colonies altogether. He would like to completely decouple from the military as well, which right now is essentially driving us into bankruptcy because, well, having a strong military means survival here in Greece. He will be an art king, he will be a very weird and different king and I think that is the time when we can question the status quo quite willingly at that point. For well, the time being, we're gonna, you know, remain under this government right here. I don't think we have any law that we would like to change right here. I think all of these are perfectly fine. We might want to roll this back. We just passed it. You know what? This is such a recent reform. Let's leave it where it is. In this episode, we need to understand what is actually going on in Europe. Now, I'm not sure... Oh, okay, hello. Alexei Romanov, an intelligentsia pacifist and tiny. One year old. Uh, that is a massive shift. Good thing that I just caught this. See, so I was looking at this and I did see that there is no alliance. I'm not sure whether they ever had an alliance with France, but Russia is now angry at France. No longer friends and in fact that is good for us because it means that Russia should help us against uh, the French and the Ottomans right here. On the other hand, the Germans are... You know, they never, I think, had an actual formalized alliance with Britain, but they are standing on their own, but they have very clear opinions. They hate France, and France hates them. Austria, generally quite beloved, I guess. Germany wants to gain them as an ally. Britain then, you know, generally kind of hated, except for Russia. I guess this is a shift in alliances, which I can only welcome. And then France, hated by essentially all, except the Ottomans, Austria. Man, this is, this is a massive power block that France actually has here. I'm worried about this. Anyway, today we're going to explore all this. I want to balance our budget. I want to get the East Again Island to <laughs> maybe stop starving, okay? But more importantly, we will simply grow. If we get the chance, obviously I will challenge either, you know, for Crete or we'll challenge the Ottomans for Cyprus or any other territories right here. We shall see how it goes. Let's just take a look look at what we can do. Oh, and man, that is so funny. Austria has declared a conquer state diplomatic play against Morocco. And as you can see, they are trying to take Marrakesh, which is, of course, the center of basically anything Moroccan here. And um, maybe this will become the Austrian sphere of influence. We have a Russian sphere of influence in Liberia already. Algeria is still free. Uh, Egypt, not yet claimed, but... Hmm, a lot of people very angry at them. It's just that Germany is also allied with them. This is gonna be interesting. And this is another interesting situation right here. People did bring this up in the comments as well. I love that. That is a really great impulse. We are House of Bavarians ruling in Greek. Would we really stick to national supremacy as much as we are doing it? And the question is very much, I think, an understandable one, right? We are not Greek ourselves and we haven't made any efforts to not be Bavarian. Not in roleplay or in actual practical uh, application. But I will tell you that I think this is just basically us respecting the old order. Surely, yes indeed, we are not Greek, but hey, that is just the way things are running. Right here, for example, factories in Thessaly have been reported to be placing Albanian people into roles with incredibly poor work conditions, owing to their status as second-class citizens in Greece. Hmm. I don't think we're gonna say this unequal treatment cannot stand. We're gonna say they are lucky that they are given any job at all, because the old order says that Hey, unless you're Greek, you are not that valid a subject of the Bavarian king. And um, the interesting thing right here is that this should now make it so, yep, there it is. Racial segregation support goes down. Oh, it both goes down? Interesting. 
I thought the racial segregation pop support as a reaction to our action would go up, but apparently not. They're lucky that they're given any job at all indeed. We're not discriminating for any true ideological reasons, it's just that, well, that's the status quo. You know, I do gotta wonder as well, what is the relationship that our house has right here in Bavaria? Historically speaking, of course, they remained kings even in the German Empire. It was a fairly decentralized organization there. And I reckon, quite frankly, that, yep, look at that, the strength of the landowners, as weak as they actually are all in all, is quite prominent here in Bavaria. I wouldn't be surprised if, sure, we are, have, we are on good terms with Russia and we enjoy where we are with Russia, but fundamentally, we might have our family point towards Germany and say, you must work with your kind. That might be something we do long term. You know what, I'm going to improve our relationships right here, I think that makes sense. And this exact arrogance to just say, hey, the status quo is the status quo is the status quo, instead of re-evaluating what is actually going on, is something that we will definitely see here as well. The Great Hunger was, of course, triggered because somebody forgot that the Isekain Islands were not connected, but, I mean, we're not doing that hot right here as well in Crete, but we do have a port. I mean, that's a good step. <laughs> that's a pretty good, right? Unbalanced trade. The famine in Greek Crete has sparked criticism of Greece's economic policy of mercantilism, with its focus on export-heavy trade. Yeah, we have focused on this quite a bit, haven't we? Now, being in the Russian market has changed things, but fundamentally, we have tobacco plantations. We made all of these resource gains, right, just so that we can export them. Very rarely will we actually work with the material ourselves. Huh. Indispensable imports must be secured even under mercantilism, or what do the poor know of national economy? Mercantilism is without a doubt a leftover of where we came from. Protectionism, free trade, honestly I think free trade might be quite likely because, well, the free trade party under the industrialists is incredibly powerful. But as it stands, we are not too interested in that. I think nationalism, so national supremacy, then of course the religion, but also free trade and our general economic arrangement. Those are the questions of the day that this king cannot answer, but maybe his heir can. Oh, and you know what? This is... Okay, this is actually really interesting. So, I think I'm gonna do something. It's a bit cheeky, okay? It's a tiny... Oh, then again. Oh, now that I think about it, I don't think I want to do this. Oh, and yeah. Yeah, I don't know. This is kind of rough. I can get an alliance here with Wallachia and I can get an alliance with Serbia. And I would love for both of these to actually get land from the Ottomans. I mean, that would be just amazing. The problem here is that if they are my allies and I start a war against the Ottomans, then... That will mean that they can't demand anything from the Ottomans because, you know, they will just be pulled into the Diplo play. This, uh, as tempting as it is, I don't think I can do this. Um, if anything, we will have to release a whole lot of land of the Ottomans and then maybe become friends with Serb and Valachia, making it so that they will feel willing to attack, you know, what we just released to claim their local territory. We obviously want the Balkans to not be under Ottoman control, but sadly, I don't think the alliances are the way to go for this. Yeah, and there they are. And... Yeah, and here they are, a movement to enact cultural exclusion. You can see that actually there's a whole lot of liberals in the actual sort of urbanite Greek environment. The petite bourgeoisie, yep, they are all indeed radicals right here. The intelligentsia aren't, but makes perfect sense even then. And they are in the... nope, you're not in the French. Oh, you're marginalized. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, okay, this is a good question. Cultural exclusion seems to be something where our own population says we would like to sort of move into this direction, but of course the powers that actually have control of the state are exactly of the opposite position. I think the armed forces and the Orthodox Church, as well as of course the landowners here, do not see that as a valid prospect. Unless they really force my hand, I, I think we're not gonna do this. All right, and at some point we definitely have to start talking about uh, about our technological progress, by which I mean our non-progress. We are very much caught here in uh, the bottom of the uh, potential that we have. I think we do want to go with some universities at this point. It will be expensive, and I'm not sure whether we actually have the money, but we certainly have the manpower, and I think it makes a lot of sense, because, well, if we don't have any universities now, then we will never catch up going forward, and that is, of course, a huge, huge issue. Let me just take a look at the rest right here. So we should now find some rubber in these locations. Currently we don't know of any of it here, but if we do find it, I will definitely start exporting it. I assume that the French and the British need it, possibly also the Germans, and then we can make some bank right there. Oh, and what is this? Communist Australia is rebelling under President James McKinsey. He's Australian, he's Protestant, and he's a pacifist. Uh, within the intelligentsia, I suppose. Do they actually have any communists right here? He's a vanguardist, yeah, they do have, oh my god, and he's also a communist, Alfred, uh, Adrian Dutton. Huh. Should they win this, it would be the world's first communist country here, I think, in this playthrough, and it would be in Australia, but yeah, these numbers, um, I don't think they're winning. 
Oh, and this is trouble. The rule folk now have actually made it past marginalized and you can see immediately we are close to revolution and these are the core areas of this country. It's not like we have a rebellion in just Crete or any of the new areas. No, no, no. This is everything, virtually everything I should say, except the capital rebelling. I'm not going to give into this unless they actually force my hand though, because this is a pretty far reaching reform. Should we do it? Cultural exclusion goes quite far. Um, I'm not sure yet. Obviously, a lot of people here support this, but the Orthodox Church does not, and we have banked on them. They have supported us, and they are Russia's arm in this country. Yeah, I don't see it. What is Russia doing, by the way? Um, they have a conservative agenda, despite Alexei Romanov here being an intelligentsia leader, but then again, he's just three years old, so we shall see where that goes. Maybe Russia will actually liberalize. And you know, with this external pressure right here, I have no idea what I'm about to do, whether that is a good choice or a bad choice, but I can tell you one thing. With this internal pressure right here and with us seemingly losing power rank, I believe our uh, beneficial prestige modifier here, where it's just like the Greek nation, yada yada yada, I think that has expired and now has led us into a position where we will merely be a minor power in just, uh, you know what is it, uh, yeah, 347 days, Jesus Christ. I think we are a bit under pressure. We need to show more results, and if we were to fail with them, then, well, you know, obviously that would be far from ideal. What I think we're about to do here um, is I think we're going to go against the Ottomans again, and I know, of course, that France is involved here. Rather, you know what, actually, I'm going uh, I'm gonna wait until France is in a war of its own, and then we're going to go ahead and declare war against the Ottomans, hope that Russia comes into this with us, and maybe claim some more territory and, you know, obviously might makes right. I gotta tell you, um, I'm pretty sure they're forcing my hand here. They're at 99 now. Uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> what kind of favor can I... Oh, it's because, the, it's because of the trade unions. Who let the trade unions no longer be marginalized? You son of a gun. Um, that's a big issue, huh? That is a huge, huge issue. And I am upgrading, by the way, I'm upgrading our level of colonial affairs right here. We have the full level here and we can't go any higher here. I think my my hand got forced yet again. I think my hand got forced yet again and I'm so sad because we will have to say bye-bye to the be fruitful and multiply modifier that is just so important. But what can you do? I mean, this is this would have been a revolution for the right of others here. You gotta really applaud the people of Greece that they're willing to do this. But my god, the old order is crumbling not just here but also in Russia. The Orthodox Church's influence is diminishing, and maybe, yep, we will be looking towards the more liberal West after a couple of years. Oh, and that's interesting. Italy wishes to enter a defensive pact. Um, let me ask you, right? You are a great power, is this true? You are a great power. Landed voting, national supremacy. They are very much like us, except they are actually Catholic. Huh, we could get an alliance from them. You know what? No, no, no. I'm going to take the defensive pact just because it will safeguard me partially at the very least. We'll have to see what we can do from there. Yeah, and that's exactly what I thought. Italy wishes us to join their customs union. <sighs> I think we're doing quite all right here, right? I mean, let me think about this. Italy is a good friend. They, oh my god. Italy is incredibly powerful. Then again, wait a minute. No, okay, I'm just, I'm just underestimating where the powers of the world are because my neighbor is the Ottoman Empire and it's this, but... You know, Russia is actually better, although they surely have worse troops. Let me ask you something, right? If I were to declare Diplo play against the Ottomans, can Italy join me? So theoretically here, if we declare Diplo play just in this region, not that impactful. Um, Italy could join me right here, but this is, man, the, the Balkans are a hotspot. There's a lot of people involved there, and many of them actually like the Ottomans. Not sure whether we want to start beef over there. If Italy... If we make Italy our customs union overlord. They would have influence right here, at least in the Balkans. I don't think, actually, is this? Oh yeah, okay, our islands are also Anatolia. We could potentially count on Italy here. Is this a realignment? You know what, I'm gonna say no for now, but we clearly have an open door there. We might see a, real a realignment. For the moment, let's just stick with Russia. Yep, and that was fast. I mean, to be expected at the end of the day, because cultural exclusion was, of course, demanded by so many. But that leaves us in a different position. I think the Orthodox Church is really falling down when it comes to its power potential. And with that, our old order is sort of, you know, just passé. Uh, with that being said, though, let me take a look at France here. Ooh, they are in a diplo play. It's a very, very minor diplo play. And they have so many troops mobilized that will surely frighten the Russians. 
Should we declare this war right here? But let me just ask this, right? Let's say I wanted to take... Um, what about Cyprus, right? Cyprus is a great addition to our collection if we can get it. Russia would get involved here. And that might be everything that we need. Obviously, we can't really invade Cyprus. But if we just get to Constantinople, we should be doing quite all right. Um, I'm going to think this over. I don't think we're there quite yet. Because, yeah, the f I, I just hate the French. Get out of here, okay? Ooh, and Spain is facing a massive, massive revolution. King Alf... Excuse me? King Alfonso de Wittelsbach of the Spanish Religious Revolt? Oh my god! I hope he wins, first of all. Second of all, what are they doing here? State religion. I believe Spain got rid of this, right? Yeah. Oh, no, they... they oh, they're introducing total separation, right. So they failed doing this, and now the Catholic Church leading the charge with the Wittelsbach is attempting to take control. I am so fascinated by what has been going on with the dynasties right here. Things have been quite successful for the Wittelsbach dynasty at the end of the day. Uh, you gotta be proud, Otto. And we got new elections, and it is so interesting. The Russian party now at 52%, I believe that is roughly the result that they had last time. Maybe, but no, I don't think they had less. I believe they were roughly here. We now have the English party doing basically nothing. The French party and the Free Trade Party all together gaining almost or roughly um, as much as they did last time. So not many changes here, despite cultural exclusion, of course, now giving the Turkish population and uh, other minorities more rights. Um, yeah, swindling futurity. Claims that the Russian party's policy of extensive money loaning has saddled few generations with an undue burden have caused the party to leak voters like a faulty sieve. I think this is a general phenomenon, right? People look at our party and say, what you are doing, what the king is doing has no future. We need something else. Um, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna say, you know what? Find a scapegoat. The public demands a sacrifice. Wait, who is this? This is the leader of the Orthodox Church. Oh my god. The Orthodox Church getting beaten down if I were to choose this. You know what? I'm going to take the momentum right here. And again, how old is that fella? Is that a long-term impact? You are um, 36. Oh my god. That would be... Yeah, that would be a hefty five-year impact right here. I'm going to go ahead and take the 20 percent momentum change though. Let's just take a look at what that does. 48 percent push them down by four percent all in all. And all of a sudden, yep, the French party, the Free Trade Party, and even the English party are serious contenders. And now we have, uh, huh, a potential duel between Stylianos Dusmanis and then right here, General Georgios Lascarides. He's an armed forms, uh, forces reformer and he is an industrialist pacifist. <laughs> the pacifist about to kill a general. I could let them fight. I could tell them in particular not to do it. I believe he is a very, uh, you know, sort of accomplished general right here. I'm gonna let them have the honor. And he died. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right, well, that general is gone. See you later, buddy. Um, let's take a look at what we can recruit here in the past. Listen, this is an honor thing, and uh, he had the honor of dying right here. We need some good... Com I like both of these, man. I think I want to recruit both of these, because this is a defensive strategist, and he is an expert offensive planner. Now, he is a pillager, but what are you gonna do? We're gonna, uh, we're gonna recruit both of these, indeed, and then are gonna put them into their position, unless uh, he's not exactly good. Yeah, this is basically the last holdover of the landowner power right here. And then I'm gonna buff up the, I believe, the offensive planner. Yeah, sure. I can't believe that we're negative here again with our bureaucracy. I need to build more bureaucratic building yet again, but we're doing well. Listen, we just haven't declared war against the Ottomans yet, but trust me, it's coming. Yep, and it does look as though King Alfonso de Wittelsbach is actually gonna take over. That is so insane. <laughs> <laughs> the names of these kings. I cannot believe this. That is incredible. I did notice, by the way, since Italy is now very positive towards us, and since I am merely a minor power, which makes them want to vassalize me, Italy would be willing to aid me in a war against the Ottomans as well. Now, it is kind of risky, because we would have to declare this war. You can see right here, Italy doesn't have an interest there. We would have to declare it in the Balkans. And in the Balkans, I mean, that's a lot of people, as we saw before, that are active here, and that might join on the side of the Ottomans as well, if we call in their rivals. Um, I think we're gonna risk it, though. After this election is over, we have to say there is a dent in, sort of, you know, the self-understanding, the self-appreciation of the Russian party and all its members. Not last, of course, the armed forces. Their king, uh, sorry, their general has just been killed in a duel. And now we have been supplanted here by landowners in control, indeed. I think uh, it might be time for a war, some saber-rattling might be necessary to gain control of the country, or rather, to maintain control of the country. Let me take a look at this right here. We're gonna keep this alliance. It is what it is. But I think it might be Ottoman time yet again. Yeah, you know what? Let's do it. Um, I'm gonna declare war. What am I gonna declare war for you? That's a good question, because I don't really want Albania 
Um, I don't even know what I can offer them, by the way. Like, it doesn't tell me what the Italians want. I assume it's a favor which could be really bad for us. But uh, from the from where I am standing, taking Albania and maybe making it a puppet wouldn't be that bad an idea. I might just keep it. Uh, we can't go for Eastern Thrace because that is technically not the Balkans. That is technically Anatolia as a strategic zone. Maybe Skopje? How many Greeks live where? That's the, that's the big question here, right? Uh, no Greeks there, actually, at all. Here we got 6% Greek. We got 1.39% Greek. I mean, the borders wouldn't be beautiful, but kind of who cares? I think we're going to go in for Skopje. Um, and maybe for more after we declare the Diplo play, depending on how much we can people to join us. Let's take Skopje as, of course, North Macedonia. Um, where is it? There it is. Skopje. Russia and Italy against France and the Ottomans. Can we win this? Maybe. Uh, I think it's time that we uh, try to find out here. We got these people leaning towards us. Nobody in the, on the Ottoman side. My god, that is good. I love that. I wonder what we can offer Italy. Either way, uh, we're back. It's time to defeat them, to prove who we are and to prove what we can do. Okay, now Italy is fine with an obligation and liberate country. Oh, okay. Um, I would actually, what I would love to do is liberate Bosnia-Herzegovina just so that they don't get cut off here later. Albania is cool, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, I think, yeah, I think we're gonna go Bosnia-Herzegovina for Italy. And then what can we offer? Oh, Russia? Oh my god, I, you gave me a heart attack. Russia does want to join us, okay? <laughs> Russia is interested in joining us. It just looked as if they weren't. Alright, okay. Let's hope that Germany holds its feet still. I would like to liberate... Why can't we do Bul uh, Bulgaria? Is it because I'm taking Skopje? Is it because we can't give this to them then? Huh, interesting. Um, what alternatively would you like? A treaty port? That's kind of boring. I would rather you take Albania, I guess, right? Cyprus is a cool liberation as well, though. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna liberate Cyprus. Not a bad idea at all. And then we can see what we what we can do here, okay? If the Germans join the Ottomans, we might be in trouble. We might be in deep trouble. But if not, then we might be this might be the death blow to the Ottomans, quite frankly, especially since Italy is coming in as well. And you can see so many of our troops coming to our aid here. Is France actually, yeah, they are all mobilizing. This is going to be a risky endeavor, especially with the amount of debt that we're making here. And it's all just for Skopje. I sadly can't add anything here, but I think Italy... Oh, no! All right. Um, the biggest, the most important thing that matters right here, without a doubt, is that we take control of Eastern Thrace. <laughs> we either win this... Ah, oh, man. Wow, we plunged the world into another world war, huh? <laughs> oh, and the Germans abandoned them again. Thank God. Oh, my God. Okay, the Germans abandoned them again promptly. We... I, th I think we got this then. Okay, I think we are indeed safe. All right, let's take a look at these battles right here. Obviously, Italy and France clashing. I mean... I'm pretty sure this is tearing their power block apart. Uh, Italy before that was focused largely on Germany, but now they are opposing one another directly here when it comes to the Balkan issues. So this is interesting to us and uh, maybe beneficial, but we shall see. This is a one battle here. We're defending first, then we will be attacking. What is going on on our islands? The Russians might be losing this assault, but at the very least we're not losing any ground. And my god, the Ottoman troops are holding back the Russians right here with an amazing value of 94 defense. Uh, dug in will do that and ah yeah defense in depth specialist yeah this is just a really good commander general Mehmed Ali Pasha huh interesting and there is the attack by the brave by the one and only general Xenon Teotokis now do recall this general is the man that you know came all right that came in and took the place of the armed forces and he is prevailing he is showing that he is exactly where he ought to be now disease among the wounded the deaths from disease amongst the wounded soldiers has skyrocketed um offload some of the strain to the civilian medical sector or this is troubling i think i'm gonna go with this is troubling i don't wanna listen the civil society of greece is already riled up enough i don't think we need any more Man, and I really wish that I could have demanded more. Yeah, I could have actually done that with Return State. I completely understand that. But obviously, we're not done with our expansion right here. Um, looking at this, we have claimed Aiden. We're not going to keep it. Not this war, anyway. But we have claimed Aiden. This is also now being defended. And then right... Ironclad, hello. And then right here, you can see it. The Turkish army has been defeated in Constantinople, meaning that we will take the city. We can't keep it, but hey, we're getting there. 
Oh, and the Attica crop failure. The state of Attica has been struck by a blight. Crops are dying left and right, and the harvest is sure to be less than, uh, than expected this year. Hmm, this will affect the harvest, or we will help how we can. I mean, we gotta, right? We've been through literally a famine just two seconds ago. Let's not let that happen again. Oh, wow, and I completely underestimated the Russians, actually. It's 1887. Now, what kind of monitors do you have? They do not have a bad fleet. And quite frankly, the Italians, oh, I mean, they're losing, but I don't think they have a bad fleet either. Let me just take a look at this. We have virtually nothing. I just want to clarify this. We are in not that great a state. But yeah, wow, the Russians can compete against the French. And the Russian Navy here, yeah, I mean, just look at these numbers. 15 against 47 ships, and they are tearing through them. Yeah, this Turkish Navy doesn't have a chance either. And here we have it. The war is over. This one was pretty swift. Now, we didn't get too much out of it, but uh, victory is a victory. <laughs> Our borders are not too pretty. But surely, we can get there in due time. Cyprus now is free. Look at that non-applicable uh, applicable standard of living. You know how it works. They are Greek and surely uh, want to join us going forward. Uh, I could do this right now. I could just, honestly, I might just actually make them... I think I'm going to make them a puppet, right? Do they have anything? No, not really. I'm going to go and make them a puppet. I think that is the most solid option. We don't need to integrate them right away. I don't want even angrier people as it stands, but I want complete control of Cyprus. If we can't have Crete, we gotta at least have Cyprus, right? Now, our new possessions here in Skopje, what is going on here? The Russian market connection is great. We won this actually fairly easily as well against France also. They just dropped out. Uh, are they in a different Diplo player? Uh, no, it doesn't seem that way. Interesting. France was very, very easy to kick out of the war. All things considered. Uh, with that being said, though, I think Skopje can... I mean, they're operating in a pretty decent space here, I think. Sure, we might uh, have them make more uh, explosives. Nothing wrong with that. Then use some more dynamite as well. If there was any coal here, it would be amazing. Sadly, you know how it is. Nope, no coal, uh, coal whatsoever. But beyond that, yeah, Skopje is a great addition to our empire. Are you immediately integrated? Let me ask you this. No, you aren't. So we definitely need to build up our actual capacity here as well. Because right now, yep, this is good. But they aren't paying any taxes. Sorry, did they actually take away the Greek proper flag of Cyprus and put what I can only assume is the normal flag for when Britain holds Cyprus here and then our flag there? Come on. Well, anyway, look at him. Prince Alexandros Patrikios has indeed now folded. And Cyprus with that is effectively in our hands, I would say. Obviously, not quite. And obviously, we also... Well, there's uh, some issues going on here that I don't want to discuss as uh, things are right now. We got to fix our budget, but in general, I think we should be quite all right. In fact, I'm going to go on and actually incorporate Skopje now. And uh, what you can see over here is a conflict in Asia. Really interesting. The US have awoken and they want this uh, Shenzhen Treaty Port in the Great Xing. And everybody else is saying absolutely not. Huh. Oh, and well, 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 look who has emerged. Maximilian von Wittelsbach is here, a pacifist landowner. Somebody that might see compromise. He has expensive tastes, he is reserved, he's an expert political operator, he's a popular commander, and he is a diplomat. Now, him being a pacifist, does that actually do anything? You know, if I made him a general, would that do anything? I don't think it would. Uh, let's put that aside, okay? He is a pacifist. He wants to work with people that previously were excluded from participating in government. Now, can he currently do that? Nope, because this is absolute hell. If we did that, it would be truly terrible. But being a pacifist, you know, I don't think he can box this through. And I think he knows that that is just not viable. On the other hand, though, national militia might be right up his direction, going against the armed forces here. Hmm, yeah, national militia indeed. That might be the long-term goal. Let me check everything else here, just so that we have it on the radar. I don't think we can pass any of these. Maybe protectionism, but honestly, that wouldn't... I don't, I don't think that is high on his agenda. If anything, national militia might be the way to take here. The Orthodox Church opposes it, the armed forces op uh, oppose it. He would be actively working against his allies in this party. I think he is much more willing to do compromise, but I don't think currently he is capable of doing it. His heir is Franz von Wittelbach, uh, Wittelsbach, and he is naked and traditionalist. What a boring, boring heir. This is, ooh, and look at that, this West Canal has been built indeed. This is an interesting predicament that we have found ourselves in. We're doing quite well, but every time Russia goes to war, our <laughs> our welfare situation goes into hell. You can see this here with all these people that are unhappy. They are unhappy because we had just been cut off from the Russian market for a bit, but we are recovering. Either way, um, I think I'm going to leave it right here. The future of Greece is interesting because we are willing to do compromise. It's just that... Okay... 
maybe after this election, but that is something for the next video. After this election, I think we're going to start doing some compromise under King Maximilian von Wittelsbach. God save, of course, Otto, who is now gone, and also God save King Alfonso de Wittelsbach. It is just so damn funny. Uh, I will leave it right here, and I will see you later, alligator.